Hey everybody, it's Safi and Marco, Dish Out on Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. It's just Marco here once again. I am here today to review Christine. Now this movie, the reason why I just randomly watched this is because of actually Halloween. You see, Halloween ends, the people who made that movie in spirit with their the way that they made the other films where they just plagiarized everything from the other Halloween films. Uh, for this one, the people who made it said in an interview, we wanted to make it like Christine. And that was just like an immediate eye roll because it's like, you, you guys don't have an original bone in your body. Because, like, why in the hell would you be talking about another John Carpenter movie when you're trying to make the definitive, uh, quote-unquote, ending to the Halloween franchise? Why would you be talking about Christine? It's because these people, they don't have any originality. They don't, they don't have any ability to write a story of their own if all that they're doing is looking in another person's film and saying, how can we emulate that? You know, that's not how good movies are made. Okay, like when they made The Godfather, they weren't saying like, hey, how, how are other gangster movies made? Let, let's make this like all other gangster movies. You know, when, uh, it, it, when bad filmmakers make movies, that's what they say. You know, a lot of movies nowadays, what do you, what do you have? You have these throwback movies that's what they call them i just call them plagiarism movies because they're not based on any sort of good original idea they're just based on i really like these types of movies i want to make a movie exactly like that movie but i can make money off of it you know that's exactly what throwback movies are you know you have these movies where it, and okay, that's off track. But anyways, and then of course, this is another clue to tell you that it is really bad plagiarism, is because the guy said that he uh, was giving the script to John Carpenter to read and approve, and before he handed it to him, he said, "I'm really scared. The script is too much like Christine," and that's how you know. Like, is that normal? Like, do normal writers who make movies, do they look at scripts and then say, like, uh-oh, this script is too much like that other movie, <laughs> but it's it's really, really good. You know, is that what normal filmmakers do? Because I, I, I just don't think that's good. I don't think that that's good filmmaking. I don't think that's good writing. I think that that's terrible. And so, basically, the whole objective of this video is to study Christine so that I can see the plagiarism right in front of me when I watch Halloween Ends on Friday because Halloween Ends is coming out finally. Finally we're going to get an ending to this now trash franchise that they ruined for the sake of fanboys to have little nostalgia moments of plagiarism where, oh, look, we copied this moment from the first one. Oh, look, we copied this moment from the second one. Oh, look, we copied this moment from the third one. Like, that's literally all they did with this franchise. Like, they didn't do anything new. They didn't do anything interesting. They just took other people's films and took parts of those films and scrapped them together like uh, fucking Arnold does with the scrap parts in this movie when he puts together Christine. And so now let's talk about the actual movie that we're reviewing here today. Well, that I'm reviewing. You know, Safi is still watching it. She's just going to say what she thinks on Friday, uh, which will be really funny because, <laughs> you know, she'll be really upset. She doesn't like plagiarism uh, even more than me, you know, uh, surprisingly. So this movie I thought was trash. Like... <laughs> And I know that that's a surprise because, but this movie was trash. Like, it really was. I don't think it was trash because of John Carpenter, though. I think that the reason why this movie is bad is because of the writing. 
this is a Stephen King script. It's a Stephen King story. And whenever people make Stephen King films, they always fall into the trap of making Stephen King films. Okay, like the best Stephen King films are the ones that stray far away from his material, his bad material. Like, for instance, uh, Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. That movie is very unlike the book, and that's what makes it good. And then you have Thinner. In the, in the Thinner story, it was originally supposed to have this stupid-ass ending. Uh, but instead, they did this whole different ending in the film. And it was so much more effective. It was so much better and less predictable. And it really was the best part of the movie. Because that was the original part of the film. <laughs> so I think that's pretty funny. And then like Return to Salem's Lot. That is a fantastic film. Like, I, I really love that movie. Like, I, I wish that we could review that movie at some point. Because that really is, like, one of my favorite vampire movies. It's so much more scarier than the first one. It's, it's very uncomfortable. It has, like, a cultish vibe to it with this town, town full of vampires. Just an entire town. Of vampires like it is very terrifying and I think that that film is a prime example though of how to adapt a Stephen King book because that film it took ideas from Stephen King's stories it took probably some things that happened but it made its own thing this Christine movie it took Stephen King's story and just made the Stephen King story and I'm sorry, but Stephen King's stories are just not very good. Like, they might be good on paper. They might be good to read. Like, they're very entertaining, probably. You know, I did try to read a Stephen King book once. Well, I had to. I was in a creative writing class, and, and he forced everyone to read for, like, the whole class for some stupid reason. I really wanted to work on a project, and he's like, no, you're not allowed to do that this t today. You have to read something. And so I just picked up this random Stephen King book, and I opened up to a random page. And it actually was uh, pretty entertaining, but in a really weird way. Because, like, oh, I don't want to go into that one, but it was very weird. Uh, weirdly written, very, very weird. Uh, it's the same thing with this movie, where it has all the Stephen King-isms. You know, you have the nerd, the stereotypical nerd with glasses. You have the bullies. You have the shitty parents. You have the shitty adult characters who are like, you know, like uh, the detective kind of. And, you know, it just... It really, it's really bad. Like, I real, I hate, I, I kind of hate this movie. I really hate it. Like, I, I liked it at first. I thought it had a good setup at the beginning. You know, these are, these were some pretty good characters in terms of, you know, the, the actors were very good. All the actors in this movie were good. The directing was good because it was, you know, John Carpenter. He he pretty much always does a, a good job. And if, uh, funnily enough, this movie actually felt like it could have taken place in the Halloween universe. And so I thought that was pretty interesting, uh, the way that he matched the look and the tone of, of that movie with this. But the problem comes when this this nerdy character Arnold it's all about this nerd and he has a a football friend and <laughs> okay he has a football player friend not a football friend <laughs> a football player is a friend and he he wants to get this car because he he doesn't really ever get to have anything of his own you know like i think that was Christine outside sorry guys Christine doesn't approve of this review. Uh, but he, just for an example, he said that he really wanted to be in band and his parents wouldn't let him. They said he had to be in the chess club. 
and like stuff like that, like ugh, ugh, t- shitty parents. And 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 John Carpenter didn't really emphasize the bad parents very much, because he was he was so busy uh, making Arnold the villain. Or I I don't know who really thought of Arnold as the villain because, you know, he's he's this very likable character and he gets this possessed car. And he has to fix it up himself. He has to pay for it all himself. You know, he spends all this money he was going to use for college on this car. And and, and it it changes him. And you can see that it changes him. That is the greatest thing about this movie. Is that over the course of the movie, the actor playing Arnold does such a good job that you see this, this visible, very creepy transformation where he... He changes into almost like a zombie. And it's really unfortunate, though, that like they treated him like he was irredeemable. They treated him like he was always bad. You know, this is just his bad side coming out. You know, there's this one line where the detective says, like, some people can't be helped. And it's like, what does that even mean? Like, <laughs> this, this is a human being. And you're investigating murders. And and it's like, well, if people can't be helped, then why do you care about all these bullies who got ki- killed? These bullies who tried to destroy his car, they were threatening his life. I mean, these were some bad people. And yet the whole movie sort of focuses on Arnold becoming the villain. And that's what I really didn't like about the movie, is that it starts off and you have this this character who you're supposed to like. And over the course of the movie, you just, you hate him. You hate that character. And you you like his friend more than him. And then there's this girl, Lee. She really complicates things because at first, it's weird because it, it almost seems like because of the car's curse that, that uh, Arnold got with her somehow. Like, because the football player wanted to get with her, but then... Arnold gets with her instead. And so I thought that was kind of strange, especially since at first she seemed like this smart girl type of character. But so it's like, why would a smart girl type of character fall in love with a guy because of his car? Like, that's kind of what they made it seem like. And then they had this really stupid thing where, you know, he takes off his glasses and, you know, it's one of those... I took off my glasses, I'm not a nerd anymore, types of movies. And he wears, like, red and, and, you know, evil colors. And then uh, the bully, he wears black, all black. And then the good guy, the football player friend, he wears blue, like the good guys. Yeah! And it's like, this this stuff is kind of cringeworthy, honestly. Like, it's very, very grade school level storytelling in terms of like I I don't know like I was expecting at least at the end for Arnold to 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 get away and to make the curse stop and at least if he gets killed he redeems himself at the end but no uh spoiler alert he he after being happy that all these people have gotten killed and being happy that his girlfriend is away from him now because she doesn't like the car. Uh, th- this story is stupid, by the way. But he's so happy, and uh, but he he he's still evil at the end of the movie, and and it's really weird. Like he has this whole thing where he he says like I don't like shitters, and he he calls people shitters, and that's it, very very odd. It's very odd weird storytelling, weird characters. This is a weird movie. And the only reason why it was even watchable is because of John Carpenter's directing. If this movie was just, you know, like a a TV movie of Christine, this would have been complete garbage. It would have been zero out of five. Uh, But John Carpenter's directing does help it a little bit, and the acting, and the music. But overall, like, 
I really don't like this movie. I'm sorry. Like, I just really don't. It's one of those movies where it drags on and on, and you, you're, you're hoping that something interesting is going to happen, and it never does. You know, right off the bat, you kind of predict that the car is going to kill the bullies, and it's like a nerd gets revenge type of movie. Uh, and then that happens, and it's like just, just the whole the whole thing is is like it's it's just not interesting. It's exactly what you'd expect to happen in a Stephen King story. Every single thing that happens, and then Lee Lee becomes the worst part of the movie because her character makes no sense whatsoever. Like, she claims to care about Arnold, but then she's, like, she's, like, cuddling up on his friend. And it's, like, she's already fallen in love with his friend because, I don't know, like, because he's just there? Like, it's really, really weird. It it doesn't make sense at all. She's just, like, oh, I'm going to be in love with you now because I'm not in love with, uh, oh, wait, but I care about Arnold. Like, it's just very weird. And the deaths are pretty, you know, the deaths just aren't very good. Like, I've seen a lot better deaths in horror movies. Just watched a movie called Intruder yesterday, and the deaths were a thousand times better than in this movie. And, oh, God, what else is there to talk about with this trash? I don't really think there's anything else, but... Overall, I was really disappointed with this movie. I was expecting a lot better, but I, I you just got to come to realize that like Stephen King, he he he's not a very good writer in terms of like what happens in his stories. And part of the reason is always because of his endings. Because he ha- he has it's 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 a cliche now. It's a cliche for the endings of his movies and stories to suck because he writes stories in the sequence of beginning to end. And, you know, really with with good writers, they write stories when they know the end already. Because when you know the end from the beginning, you, you can build up to that end so much better. And like the way that the story built up in this movie, it was more so built up for Arnold to snap out of the curse and then redeem himself and get the girl, you know. And there was another thing, too, of, like, you know, the football player, he got injured on the football field so badly that he could have been paralyzed. And, you know, that was another weird thing. And there were a lot of weird things in this movie. And I know I'm saying weird a lot. It's just because... I don't know what else to say. Like the movie, there's there's been a lot better movies. There's a lot better John Carpenter movies, and there's a lot better Stephen King movies. So, you know, this movie, while I was watching it, I got a cinnamon roll from Panera Bread, and I was eating that. It was very, very good. Uh, this movie reminded me, though, a Better Call Saul. The way that they treated the Arnold character was sort of like in the final season of Better Call Saul, where they they how they treated uh, Jimmy in the final season of that show, uh, demonizing him and making him irredeemable, and then like uh, uplifting the girl, you know. Because I really liked uh, Lee at first. I thought she could have been like a great love interest uh, character. But by the end of the movie, she just becomes, like, the worst part of the movie by far. Besides the writing, obviously. Uh, But it also reminded me of how, when we watched the finale of Better Call Saul, we ate this McDonald's cinnamon roll. And it was terrible. It was dry. It was stale. The icing was not good. It was almost flavorless. It was like eating styrofoam. It was really, really gross. That's what I would rate this movie. This movie is a McDonald's cinnamon roll. Uh, Very cheap, very simple. It's exactly what you'd expect from McDonald's, and it's just really not good. 
However, I bet that it is better than Halloween Ends. That's for damn sure. Uh, so please like this video, comment, tell me what you thought of Christine. Because I, I don't I don't care if you liked it or not. You know, I mean, I, I wanted to like it. I really wanted to like it. But most of the movie... They genuinely thought it was scary for the car to have the radio come on and playing this 1950s rock and roll music. And I thought, like, you know, this isn't scary at all. This is just kind of dumb. Like, there's so many dumb, weird moments in the movie that it just, it did not work for me. So, uh, goodbye, everybody. See you soon.